Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate you taking the time to learn more about Prodigy as a supplemental math resource and how you can support your students' learning. First, we will introduce ourselves and provide a little bit more information about who we are and what we do. And then we'll share some exciting news about Prodigy's new brand, which just launched. Next, we'll talk about what back to school looks like this year and how you can get started on the right foot, regardless of whether you're teaching remotely, in person, or a combination of both. We'll then review our data you can gather through the intentional usage of Prodigy and our placement tests to help identify a starting point at the beginning of the school year. Next, we'll discuss how Prodigy can specifically help to support remote learning. And finally, we will walk you through the ins and outs of our Prodigy partnerships and exclusive features. At the end of the session today, we'll have a question period. But with that being said, we highly encourage questions throughout the presentation. Please use the Q&A box or the comment section to ask any questions you may have as they come up, and we'll be pausing to address them throughout. Hi, everyone. Uh, yeah, we can see me, we can hear me, I hope. I am Joe, I am the creative director here at Prodigy. And ultimately, I guess it's it's my role to ensure that everything anybody ever sees really represents what we believe and who we really are. Hi, I'm Rachel, and I'm a customer success manager here at Prodigy. I work directly with educators, parents, and students across North America to help support them on their Prodigy journey. Hey, everyone. Hope you can see me as well and hear me. Uh, my name is Shakiba, and I'm a partnership manager here at Prodigy. Um, and I actually work with admins to get Prodigy implemented in schools and districts by understanding your particular needs and goals, and then providing custom support through our partnership program, which we'll be talking about at the end as well. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah. I'm an education specialist here at Prodigy, helping to support our various partnered schools and districts. Awesome. All right, I'll take it from here. I'm uh, going to talk to everybody about our new brand and why everything went a little bit orange if, uh, if you've been paying attention and on any of our social channels or been to our website. So there's a good reason for that and I'll take you through that right now. Um, for us, I think the core thing for us has always been the fact that our mission is what drives us. It's driven us since day one. It will always be the thing that unites us towards a, a common goal, which is, as you can see here, to help every student in the world love learning. That is so core to, to who we are. And so a lot of times when a brand does a rebrand, what they ultimately are doing is trying to kind of reinvent themselves in some way, shape or form. But a lot of times they'll also just lose track of kind of who they are. But for us, this really was a moment to just recenter ourselves on the core of who we are, organize the best way, the most unique way, the most eye-catching way to kind of get that information across and then shout it from the rooftops. And so we've been working on this for quite a while, but it was all around recentering ourselves around helping every student in the world love learning. And now that's a lofty goal. And it's, it's a big thing that we obviously go towards. And one thing that we've always believed as well is that in order to do this, we have to take part in transforming education. And so, you know, what that means is, you know, we believe that like education should be personalized. We believe education should be effective, more engaging, um, sustainable and accessible by everyone. And so with that, and as we work to not only improve the products that we deliver to adhere to all of those things, we also, you know, are trying to like improve the systems around us and, you know, help teachers, help students, help parents um, fall in love with learning. And so what that leads me to is when COVID hit, you know, we would be remiss not to talk about the fact that when, when COVID hit, it was eye-opening. The education system wasn't ready. Uh, even though we have tools at our fingertips to be able to work remotely and do these things, the moment that kids weren't in their homeroom and they were suddenly in a room in their home, the education system was not sure, was not organized, was not able to adequately handle this. Um, even though there were definitely tons and tons of teachers who just had to figure it out for themselves. And so this was really eye-opening for us. And it really 
just solidified the fact that like, while we've been working on this, this rebrand, it's probably more important than ever to get our message out there. This is me working from home, uh, artist rendition, of course. And so with that, it was kind of like, we realized, you know, people believe in brands that believe in something and we needed to show everyone what we believe in so that we could get people to latch on, use our products, and hopefully transform education so every student in the world will love learning. And so where do you start when it comes to trying to kind of reinvigorate uh, what you believe in? Start with the logo. And so this is our new logo. Uh, we're pretty proud of it. We're pretty happy with sort of how it turned out. And I think the reason for that is we really created something that truly stands for what we are and who we are. Um, and I don't think a lot of brands can necessarily say that. So the symbol, um, which is probably the core of the logo, is what we call the path. And the reason we call that is for two reasons. It tells two stories. The first of which is the fact that it's all done with a single line. And so the reason for that is it represents the learning journey that any of us go on the moment that, from the moment we're born until, you know, we stop, we never stop learning. And so that takes twists and turns and goes all over the place. And it's not linear. It's not just one straight line, but it is a continuous journey. And so that one line is a learning journey, but it also represents the fact that our learning journeys go from small beginnings to big accomplishments. Um, and so that's really just symbolizing the fact that like, when you love learning, you're going to start with learning these things, but ultimately that's going to lead to big accomplishments and that can be the result of so many different uh, ways that you took in your learning journey. And so, you know, this is kind of what ultimately our logo ended up looking like. And we're really, really happy with it. We think that this is something that can be unique to us and, and stand for what we really are. From there, you know, we've got to move on to the rest of the parts of, of kind of the visual parts of the brand. And one thing we really wanted to do too was just showcase our optimism for the future through our colors. Like we believe that with the tools that we have and the passion that we have and, and the just collective of what the world of education can do, let's show that optimism off with our colors. And so the orange is kind of what we're calling our prodigy orange. That's the core of our brand. And we believe that it's just like this optimistic, uh, you know, bright color that grabs attention. And then we've just paired it up with all of these other ones that really just showcase the fact that like, you know, we really are excited for where education can go. The next thing is our fonts. We, we updated our fonts. We actually created a new one. We call it Prodigy Sans. Um, it's available free online if anybody wants it because that's kind of the Prodigy way. Uh, but we paired it up with a, a, another font that again, just shows that optimism and that, that uh, emphasis and energy that we have. And so, you know, one of the fonts is functional and one of the fonts is fun, which is kind of what we do with uh, Prodigy Math Game. And then, you know, we started looking at broader pictures of, of the brand and it was kind of like, what's another way that we can uniquely grab attention? And in this instance, it's represent all of our users and all of the students, teachers, parents, like you name it. And so this is just the beginnings of our collection of characters and people and we love them so much we think that they've got so much personality we've actually named each and every one of them um but it's also just the beginning we we really love the fact that we can kind of use these vibrant colors and these these 3d characters to create a really diverse group of people um that will represent kind of who we are and and who our users are and if they've gotten a pop, then everything else has got to get a pop of 3D as well. And so, you know, applying our colors and applying this 3D-ness, uh, it just allows us to kind of like have everything just stand out and be a little bit different and hopefully grab attention and, and showcase the ideals that we believe in. So, you know, if they're talking about success from students soaring, we've got a rocket down there that's uh, pretty cute. Or, you know, if you're searching for something, we've got the magnifying glass, or if you're setting goals, We've got a mountain with a flag on the top because that's where you're going to get, that's where you're going to go. So we're pretty excited about these two. And we love just, you know, the way that they jump off the screen, really. And then I'd be remiss if we didn't uh, 
talk about Ed. So I've got a little video here if you haven't seen. And so, oh, he's going to be So this is Ed. Uh, you probably remember our fuzzy little 2D snaggletooth uh, monster. Who knows what he is, where he came from, but he's kind of grown up. Uh, it's kind of had a bit of a makeover, but still has that snaggletooth, still has those teal eyes, um, still has the fuzzy little ears, but it's more equipped now than ever to help students with their confidence. And that's kind of always been the core of what Prodigy is. And we just wanted to kind of give Ed a bit of a makeover and give, give Ed a bit more of a purpose within the brand. I, I like this one the best. Uh, this is Proudy McProud Ed. And, uh, you know, really what Ed stands for is what Prodigy has always been, where, you know, imagine a child with a security blanket or a teddy bear. It's giving them the confidence and taking away some anxiety of something that's new and can be scary. So for a, for a very little child, it could be sleeping in their own bedroom for the first time. But for a lot of people and children, especially looking at math can just be anxiety and can be a scary situation because it's, it doesn't look very friendly. And Ed has always been there. You get an answer, right? And Ed shows up to say, correct, you got it. And just give you that burst of confidence and take away that anxiety. And so, you know, that's what Ed kind of represents. And that's what, uh, that's, that's how we're going to kind of use them to, to ensure that, you know, students are really feeling uh, confident in anything that they want to learn. So before I sign off, I do have a poll for everybody. Uh, launch poll. All right, so if you're paying attention, in terms of the symbol, the path, uh, just wondering what it actually stands for. Is it small beginnings? Is it a student's learning journey? Big accomplishments? Or is it all of the above? I love it. I see answers coming in. All right. I'm gonna end the poll now. Get your votes in. All right. All right. Sharing the results. I think everybody can see this. Uh, you know what? Nobody's wrong. I'm apologizing. I threw in a trick question. It was definitely all of the above, but all of the answers were correct. It definitely stands for a student's learning journey. It stands for those small beginnings and those big accomplishments as you go through that learning journey. And so anyways, I hope that everyone on here will fall in love with the logo as much as we have. Of course, we're a little more attached because we've known about it for a bit, but uh, um, I think that uh, it does a good representation of who we are. Uh, and so before I sign off and hand it to the next panelist, I'll just leave you with one more video that just kind of does a quick fun little recap of, of what we've got. Oh no, oh yeah, there we go. We learn every day. Some days we learn a little, other days, we learn a lot. When you love to learn, it's easier, more engaging, and fun. At Prodigy, our mission is to help every student in the world love learning. And for the last nine years, our game has helped 90 million of them love learning math. But why stop there? There's a new school year ahead, which means a new you and a new us. So we're proud to show you the next chapter of our journey. This is the path, and it represents a student's learning journey from small beginnings to big accomplishments. Along the way, they'll see what's bright get brighter with our new color palette. And they'll see how we made the functional fun by pairing our new fonts together. And Ed, well, they've gone on a journey too, grown up, more confident and ready to support you on your learning adventure. So we're brighter, louder, and a bit more orange. What's next? Well, we're going to push boundaries. We're going to make every student in the world love learning. And we want you to come with us. So to every student, 
teacher, and parent. Whether you're learning from home, school, or a little bit of both, join us for the new school year. A new us and new possibilities. Awesome. All right, I'm going to hand it over to Rachel. You are now the host. And uh, thank you, everybody, for taking the time to hear about our new brand. Thank you. Hi, everyone. There we go. Hopefully you can all see my screen okay here. I'm Rachel. As I mentioned before, I work very closely with teachers across North America to help support and implement Prodigy in the classroom. So with that being said, I'd like to acknowledge that back to school this year looks very different than it has in previous years. For some of you, you may be teaching your students virtually this year in a remote classroom setting. For others, you may have your students back in the building with you. And for a lot of you, you may be juggling some combination of both scenarios. I'd like to talk through a couple of these scenarios and share some some tips and best practices for easing the transition back to school. So really quickly here, I just want to get a good sense of um, who we kind of have in the room right now. Um, so I'm going to launch another poll for those of you to see here. Um, what does your start of the year situation look like right now? Are you remote? Are you hybrid? Are you back in person? And lots of results here. Wow, that's a pretty big mix of both. I'm going to give everybody just another minute or two to answer here because um, we do have quite a few of you. All right. So it looks like with our audience right here, we have a lot of remote, we have quite a few hybrid, and we have a couple of you who are back in the buildings as well. So let's share those results there um, so you guys can see that as well. So with that being said, I know that for most of you, these questions up here on the screen, maybe just a couple of the many thoughts that have crossed your mind when trying to visualize what back to school looks like in a remote learning environment or in a hybrid learning environment. And of course, one of your primary considerations is going to be trying to figure out how your new and returning students will fit in with their classmates in a virtual environment. Now more than ever, the socio-emotional well-being of our students is at the forefront of our minds. After months of being at home, how do we try to make the beginning of the year seem as normal as possible for them? One thing you can do is try creating a virtual buddy system in your remote classroom. Pair up your new students with another child in their class, assign them classwork to do together, a fun project to get to know one another, or periodic check-ins where they can connect with one another. Along those same lines, try scheduling one-on-one -on -one time for your students with, another, with one another on a rotating basis. So perhaps each week have students pair up with one of their peers and connect virtually. It's been a long time since most of the kids have seen one another and this is a great way for them to ease back into the social environment of school from afar. And as I'm sure you've experienced over the last several months, connecting with your parents is now more, more important than ever. Parents and guardians are the gatekeepers to your students' remote learning. Involving them in your classroom routine and getting them onboarded with any online resources you're using will be key to keeping your students engaged and learning. So how do we connect? A good idea is to try starting a class blog. There's so many platforms available that you can use to share your classroom routines, fun updates, and news relating to their children, and it's an easy way to communicate home regularly. You can send your parents email alerts to know them how their child is doing with the remote learning. Um, are there any areas that their children need extra support? Have they made any exciting accomplishments you want to let them know about? Finally, ensure that your parents are aware of all the resources you're using to support your students learning. With Prodigy specifically, parents are able to create a free parent account that will send them weekly progress reports, monthly report cards, and allow them to set goals for their children and reward their achievements. So we're going to put a link in the description. Um, and in the chat there for more information on how you can quickly and easily send home parent letters and get them on board with their accounts. For all of the obstacles you may encounter surrounding remote learning, there's just as many for those of you who are going back to teach your students in person or doing a mix of both. Getting students back into their everyday classroom routine after coming back from summer break is always tough. This year, they're coming back from a much longer period of time away from the classroom, and there will most certainly be some challenges that come along with that. When establishing your classroom routine at the start of the year, make sure that you're creating a consistent schedule that's the same from day to day so students know what to expect. 
For those of you who find yourselves in a blended classroom environment, both in person and online, create virtual classroom norms so students can easily manage expectations and post them on your online classroom. Creating daily checklists or image-based checklists is a great way to allow students to manage their own work. With so many online tools and resources available to us, it can get overwhelming. It is important to make sure that you start the year with a clean roster of students on all of the platforms you use. Check with parents to make sure that you have the most up-to-date contact information for connecting virtually. Do they have a preferred email address to receive notifications? Do they have a particular account tied to online video conferencing if needed? Most importantly, we want to ensure your students are able to access all online resources from home when needed. Making sure that students are correctly registered, rostered, and have their login info handy is a key component of a successful online classroom. For step-by-step -step instructions on how to archive old classrooms, add new students to your roster, and manage your classroom in Prodigy, follow the link in the description. And finally, you'll want to make sure that you're taking advantage of the assessment tool in Prodigy to align the content you're teaching in your classroom to the questions students will encounter when practicing at home. If you have any questions about this, feel free to put them in the Q&A or the chat. And for inf more information on using the assessment tool to increase math outcomes, check out the link also in the description. So with that being said, I'm going to turn things over to my colleague, Sarah. Welcome, Sarah. <laughs> Thanks so much, Rachel. As Rachel mentioned, we're all in a very different place than we would normally be this back to school season. For those of you just starting out as new teachers, it will be challenging not to be able to connect and learn from colleagues in person or to know even where to start in terms of setting up your new, possibly virtual class. That doesn't begin to frame the challenges of how to engage your very first class when it might be their first time back in a school in months. For those of us more experienced teachers, and I'm talking about knowledge here, let's not start aging ourselves and counting the years we've spent in the classroom. We've never seen a back to school like this before. And that's tough. I know that for the first couple of weeks of summer break, I'm usually excited to relax, spend quality time with friends or family, or just take restroom breaks when I'd like to. But by week three, I know I'm always back in the dollar store buying paper and pencils for my classroom or at the library looking for brand new read alouds for the next year. Teachers just can't turn the teacher and us off. This year, some of us don't even know if we will be in the classroom at all yet, and that can definitely throw even the most experienced veteran for a loop. Our team here at Prodigy is dedicated to you and to your students. We are so invested in making this school year the best possible, regardless of what happens next. The students that come into our buildings and campuses, either in person or online, will be looking to their teachers more than ever for that support and programming that we all know makes a difference. And that starts with all of you. So just remember, we have your back. And that all starts with getting you that data that may have been missing from the end of last school year. So let's take a look into that. So I have a poll here for you that we'll be launching. I'd like to know how many of you have ever tried using the Prodigy placement test before. So I'll put 30 seconds on the timer here if you wanna get your results in. Couple more seconds. And there it is. So it looks like a lot of people are familiar with the Prodigy placement tests, which is great. So let's go over some of the capabilities of that. At the end of last school year, many of us weren't able to pull in the data to measure student achievement like we would normally do. Others were, but a major question was the reliability of the data due to the extenuating circumstances surrounding the end of last school year. Let's face it. The data is important. It helps us to identify gaps in learning, students that may need more attention, especially at the start of the following school year, or students that may need extensions so that they can continue to push their own boundaries in terms of achievement. Enter the Prodigy placement test. Now, those of you who had mentioned before that they had started the school year with Prodigy may remember the placement test. This runs automatically twice a year, 
with one of those times being right now at the start of the school year. And the best part is that you don't have to do anything to make it happen. It's automatic. Once your students log into Prodigy, they'll begin taking the placement test, but they won't even know that they're doing it. They'll just think they're going through regular gameplay. When students answer questions during the placement test, our adaptive algorithm actively works to keep them in their zone of proximal development with questions that are just the right amount of difficulty to keep them engaged in learning. As students answer questions across different domains, our algorithm advances them when they do well and moves them back to prerequisites when they struggle. The adaptive algorithm helps students build confidence and knowledge, leading to that lifelong love of learning that we're all hoping for our students to gain. The placement test also automatically runs when you create a new classroom during the school year or a student creates a new account. You might encounter this if you get a student that arrives partway through the school year. Once you're done setting up your class, and we would recommend not assigning any assessments for two to three weeks in order for each student to have an opportunity to fully complete that placement test. Now, I know for me, the real teacher fun comes in with getting that placement test report. Here, you'll be able to see the overall grade level the student has been placed at, the grade level each student has been placed at for each individual domain, and a full class view on how students are moving through the placement test. So you have this report right here on your screen, and you can see here that the colored circles in the graph represent domain specific grade levels. So I'll break that down a little further for you. The green circles that you see here mean that the student is at current grade level or above their current grade level. Yellow circles indicate below grade level, probably by one grade level approximately, and red circles mean that that student is well below their grade level, meaning two or more grade levels below. For example, if you look at the student I've highlighted for you here on the screen, Kyle, you can see that Kyle is struggling with data and measurement because he is in red here. This shows that he's well below grade level in that area and will need some additional support in order to boost his understanding. For more information about how to read these reports, you can do one of two things. You can contact your building's Prodigy Lead teacher, or you can head to our website where you can get more support. For those of you who have used Prodigy before in their classrooms, we know that it's a great tool to incorporate in station rotation or centers. In the past, I've set up my centers to include some of these following things. I usually include, or always really include, a guided center where I help my students by providing scaffolds, review, or extensions to specific small groups of students based on their needs. And Prodigy can help to determine these groups. I'll talk about that next. I also always include a playing Prodigy Center where students spend time playing Prodigy. Right after, they can head to the guided center where I can use the real-time data that just came in to inform what we'll, we will be talking about during our guided session. It can also help me to create small groups since I can use the reports to see which students are struggling in which areas and then group them accordingly. This is especially impactful if I create an assignment for my students to play based off of that day's math lesson I just taught in class. I also include a group task. This should be slightly beyond what the students would be able to do independently. I often also assign specific roles to my students to make sure that everyone is participating in the problem solving challenge, which as we all know, there can always be those students that try and take over all of the roles. So that helps to keep the situation balanced. I also like to include a hands-on center. This could be anything from using Play-Doh to represent numbers to internet searches for how a math concept can be applied in the workplace. Now, as you all know, that would definitely be dependent on their grade level. I also really enjoy having a math journaling center, which can include actual writing in a math journal, taking pictures on an iPad and then annotating them, or reading a math related read aloud and having students respond in a video journal about their own learning. 
Now, I know what you're thinking. What if we're not in the physical classroom? I hear you. It is hard to replace that time you spend quietly walking around the room observing, posing prompting questions to those students, making notes and planning next steps based on that in-person observation. So here are some things that may help to provide centers if we're looking at a remote or blended model, which I know many of you will be. My first tip is to try video conferencing. Have students keep their video on so that they know that they're not working alone if they're in a synchronous model. Also, if you're working synchronously, create breakout rooms within your main video conference for students to work with their peers. Another thing would be to pre-record a math read aloud and to include your own think aloud with it so students feel as though they're really right there in the classroom listening to you. Try using virtual manipulatives. Prodigy has some wonderful virtual manipulatives in game that your students can use. If you're working asynchronously, create a little friendly competition with points that students can earn for completing each station or center. Now, we have looked at remote centers here. Let's go a little more in depth about remote learning with Shakiba. Thanks, Sarah. Let me just make this work. <laughs> As my two colleagues here have already emphasized, this year is unlike any other, uh, not only for the teachers, but for the families and students too. So learning fully online for months was a challenge that no parent or family member anticipated. So it's pretty understandable if many families are not eager for the new school year. Uh, the new year school year generally signified a time for new beginnings and exciting opportunities for students and their families, like getting new clothes and backpacks, colored pencils, and seeing your friends after a summer packed with adventures. Um, this year, that's definitely not the case for many students since many of them might not be returning to the classroom. So this harsh reality is quite difficult for a lot of us to accept. Although Prodigy can't solve all the world's problems, uh, we can start by helping make the lives of families a little bit easier by offering our support and providing them with an easy to use platform where they can help their child to continue to love learning regardless of where they're learning from. Uh, Prodigy provides a safe space for parents to communicate with educators, engage their child and access information that will help them create a love for learning in their child. So with that said, I will be highlighting some of the ways that we are currently helping families and how we, ha how we plan to continue supporting parents in their effort to navigate this coming school year. So number one, um, as you all know, parents are an essential part of the learning process because when parents are active partners in their child's education, math learning becomes consistent and supported at school and at home. This is especially true right now when many students have already been learning from home since March and many will still be learning from home this September. Uh, parents have access to a parent dashboard, as Rachel mentioned before, uh, where they get to see their child engage with Prodigy and also monitor the progress and get detailed reports of their performance on the dashboard. Parents have complete access to the topics covered, curriculum progress, weekly assignments, and the grade level of their child. The dashboard also provides a basic overview of the child's current and completed goals, including the progress they've made. Along with the dashboard, Prodigy also delivers weekly and monthly reports of their child's progress in the game, which parents have full access to, by the way. Uh, the report actually gives a detailed evaluation of the performance in various areas. Parents can even use this to compare it to the previous reports and view the overall progress. We feel as though, second, um, we feel as though it's not only important to keep parents aware of what their children are learning, but also to get them involved. The parent letter that you send home lets you invite parents to join Prodigy, and each parent letter is personalized and includes the student's username and password so the parent can connect to their child, and they can learn information about Prodigy and instructions for the parent to create a free Prodigy account. Lastly, uh, parents can access even more information about Prodigy and other topics through our webinars like today, uh, Prodigy's blog, and our multiple social media accounts. We host monthly webinars that are accessible to anyone who wants to join, and we cover a variety of topics ranging from game-based learning to new updates on Prodigy to how to use Prodigy. And on our blog, we have hundreds of articles that cover a multitude of topics for parents to learn about, such as world issues concerning students, how to use resources to uh, your advantage, and Prodigy support for parents. Our social media presents our updates, fun challenges, and ways to get involved as a parent. 
If you want to check out our website, blog, or social media, uh, there will be links in the chat for you to go ahead and check that out. Uh, we provide many ways for parents to actually access fun opportunities to get involved in their child's learning, but to also be part of a community of other parents and educators that support one another and share their ideas so that their students can be successful in their learning journey and other endeavors as well. This brings me to some of the tools that we can actually, uh, that everyone can use to help uh, get involved a little bit easier. Next slide, please. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so I've actually got a poll for you guys. I'm gonna have that pull up, uh, but did you know that on average teachers spend 15 minutes uh, out of every hour making sure that their students can actually log on? I'm gonna give you guys a chance to answer that. Give it a couple more seconds. In the meantime, while you guys are answering, uh, we're always looking for ways to help teachers save time uh, and simplify their digital experience. That's actually why we uh, have clever integration in Google Classroom to onboard your students onto Prodigy a lot easily, or a lot more easily. Okay, so the, uh, the poll says a lot of yeses. That's what I thought. So yeah, we definitely uh, hear you guys. Uh, we have gotten a lot of requests from teachers in the past to add Prodigy to their list of educational apps in Clever. Uh, so we've officially partnered and integrated with Clever. Uh, if you don't know what Clever is, it's a single sign-on or SSO application that is meant to save you time. It's also user-friendly and helps with remote instruction. Clever is great because it eliminates the need to remember various usernames and passwords, uh, which means your students can actually focus on learning and you can reclaim valuable instruction time. Uh, to get started with Clever, or if you want to learn a little bit more about it, uh, ch check out the link that's going to be in the chat again. Next is Google Classroom, which I know a lot of you are probably familiar with. Um, if you have a teacher account linked to your Google Classroom or account, uh, you can now actually import your whole class list via Google Classroom. This will automatically generate new student accounts for all of your students that are imported this way, saving you lots of time. If you want to learn how to import your Google your class uh, through Google Classroom, check out the link again in the chat, um, and that'll show you how to do that. Both of these apps will also allow parents to be able to get their kids online as well, easily as well, uh, which will save them time um, and access data easily as well as help their child um, a little bit more quickly. So we always make it top of mind to support all of our users and ensure sustained success on Prodigy. Um, Rachel and I will cover how we are supporting schools through our partnership program next. So today there's over 50 million students and over 2 million teachers using Prodigy. While our exponential growth so far has been an incredible journey, it has come mostly from word of mouth. It usually starts with teachers discovering Prodigy, seeing how excited their students get, seeing the data and reporting that they have access to, and then sharing with others in their community. Since all these teachers had no direct support, when we launched Prodigy Partnerships in 2017 to ensure we could partner with schools and districts to provide support to teachers, implement Prodigy with more fidelity, and work with schools and districts to drive greater results and student outcomes. We're extremely passionate about ensuring that schools are supported on Prodigy and gaining the best results. So we have many elements to our partnership, partnership that help to do this. We will highlight some of the elements that we feel can be immensely beneficial in saving you time, collaborating and sharing ideas, as well as highly engaging your students. Thanks, Rachel. Yeah, so the, fo the following are just some of the features that are available when your school partners with Prodigy. Um, the first you see there is professional development, which is an essential part of ensuring success on any resource, and Prodigy is no exception. Uh, we provide customized world-class PD for every school we work with so that we can show you what matters to you and what will make you the most successful. Uh, Prodigy's PD is collaborative, data-driven, and classroom-focused, so that is so that is sustained in the long run. Uh, we're also mindful of your comfort with technology. We understand that some teachers are new to being partially or fully online and thus have a very digital proficiency level. Uh, so we do offer one-to-one -one meetings beyond our regular uh, PD where we can actually dive into aspects of our teacher dashboard with you a little bit more, uh, a little bit more in length. Uh, professional development can really take your classroom to the next level by bringing you more knowledge and empowerment to do the things you already are great at uh, and by giving you the tools to help your students achieve amazing things. 
The next there is tournaments. A little friendly competition never hurt anyone. Uh, Prodigy tournaments are a blast with students and educators alike. Um, it is a fun way for your students to actually bond with one another, especially while they're away from one another, uh, while competing for fun prizes and further engaging with Prodigy. There is literally no better way to motivate a student to do hundreds of math questions than a Prodigy tournament. At Prodigy, we host school-wide and district-wide tournaments uh, where students answer math questions on Prodigy for a length of time chosen by your school or district. And then the top players actually win prizes such as free memberships and exclusive rare pets that give them bragging rights and hunger to do even more math, which is always fantastic. Tournaments are also an easy way to gain more data on your students' progress since they answer more questions during tournaments than any other time of the year. So while students are having fun, as teachers you benefit from more data that can help you to help your students further. And if you want to learn more about tournaments, please check out the link in the chat again. Uh, next is focus mode. So focus mode has been highly, highly requ uh, requested by teachers for a long time because it increases time on task on Prodigy. When you, when you enable focus mode as a teacher, it encourages mastery of relevant math skills, increases time on task, and helps students finish assignments and plans earlier. It also means that gameplay is limited and socialization is disabled, which helps students concentrate on math uninterrupted. The important thing to note is that focus mode is not seen as focus mode uh, to students. When you enable focus mode as a teacher, students actually visit a place called Tower Town in the Prodigy world and use their math skills to build unique towers that represent skill and knowledge growth. This is a really fantastic feature because Tower Town is an exciting new gameplay experience, especially for students who aren't drawn to the battle and adventure aspects of the rest of the game. It also lets students actually visualize growth mindset by seeing their towers grow as a result of practicing and developing their math skills. So if you want to learn more about focus mode, again, check out one of the links in the link in the uh, in the chat that will be posted. Uh, next is co-teaching. It's a relatively new feature for our partners, um, but it's something that has been requested a lot as well uh, for quite some time. Co-teaching actually allows other teachers or support staff to share the workload and co-plan together. Uh, support staff such as teacher assistants, fed teachers, interventionists, and site coaches are recommended to join. Um, as an example, co-teach provides a great way for teachers to coordinate content for students traveling between large groups in class instruction, as well as individual or smart, or, uh, smart sorry, group, uh, small group with uh, an interventionist, so tier one and two. Um, easily add or remove co-teachers based on your preference and ever evolving classroom needs, as you guys all know. Um, I just wanna end things here actually um, by saying thank you to everybody um, and taking the time to actually learn more about Prodigy. Uh, for some of you, I know it's kind of late in the evening, so we do appreciate you joining us. Uh, we hope that the information was helpful and valuable to you all. Uh, check out our website, of course, for more information. And if you want more resources, it's all going to be there for you and available there. Um, now we actually have some time for some questions. I know I see a lot of questions popping into our uh, Q&A there. Yeah, there definitely are a ton of questions coming in, which is wonderful. Keep those coming for sure. Um, I'm going to start it off with the first question here. Um, that question is, how do you play Prodigy with your students virtually? Um, I can give you a few examples of how you might want to go about doing that because it was definitely one of my favorite things to do um, in the classroom. So my first step for doing this was actually a little bit sneaky. Um, I went around the classroom, found out what some of my students' screen names were because as you all know, for privacy and student security, we don't include student names as their characters. So I would discover what my students' names were, and then I would walk around and battle one of them until they engaged in a math battle with me. And then afterwards, I would let the class know that I did that, and then they were all shocked that their old teacher was playing Prodigy on there with them, and then soon it was a huge thing. So um, one thing that I found was really fun that students look forward to is battle the teacher time, where I would put it up on my whiteboard, or if you have a screen or a television or a larger computer in your classroom, you can set it up, and then students can actually watch you battle different students, and let me tell you, there will be a huge lineup of your students waiting to battle you as the day goes on. Uh, so hopefully that helped to explain a little bit of what I enjoy doing, but of course, um, everyone has their own way of doing it. So you can also take pictures of their towers and that's another um, 
way that you can engage with Prodigy and your students. So I would screenshot some of the towers that they built in Tower Town, and then I would print them out or just display them on a computer screen, and then they would have to guess whose tower it was. So that's super engaging and fun for students as well. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Rachel now. Uh, we have a question here about the placement test. Um, and some folks here are wondering, how long is the placement test? So the placement test itself, um, you should definitely allow your students some time to play through all the questions so that they're able to complete that test. Uh, you will see it come up in your calendar, uh, in your assessment tool, and it will look like it takes maybe a couple weeks. It, it shouldn't actually take that long. In actuality, it should take a student about one to an, sorry, an hour to an hour and a half of game time. So depending on the student, depending on how quickly they move through the questions, it should take them a solid hour to hour and a half. Now that doesn't need to all be done in one sitting. That can be done over multiple sessions. That could be done, you know, multiple times during a week, but I would definitely allow the students at least a week or so to make sure that they all work through that placement test and you get that data that you need. Amazing, thanks so much, Rachel. No problem. Uh, we have some follow-up questions about math battling your students here, so I'll just cover those quickly. Um, when I was going in to battle my students, yes, I did create a student account. So I created an account for myself as a student, and then I would go in. Um, I would make sure that the students are in the same area that I am. So uh, if your students are in Firefly Forest, make sure you're heading to Firefly Forest to find them there um, or else it will be nearly impossible. So when you're kind of sneaking around and checking out where they are, make sure to check out what area of the game they're in as well. Uh, it looks like we have another question here about a teacher who is a parent who's looking to get their child on Prodigy, uh, maybe Shakiba, you could answer this one. Um, this teacher is looking to get their child on Prodigy, um, but they're not sure of how to go about creating an account for someone who isn't their own student. Yeah, absolutely. So as a parent, um, as we mentioned before, you are more than welcome to go ahead and create a parent account. We encourage you to. Um, so aside from your teacher account, you can also have a parent account um, and you would basically go the same way as you would normally. Um, the only difference is you wouldn't upload them through Google Classroom or Clever. Um, you can actually go onto your website and create a uh, a student account for your, your child and then connect them to your parent account. Um, a pop-up will come up in the actual game when your child does sign up or you sign them up. Um, it will ask to connect you uh, to a parent account, which then you would do so uh, using whatever email address you have used uh, to create your parent account with. And then that way, as soon as you've done that, they'll connect uh, your child to your parent account and you'll be able to see all of that information in your dashboard. Perfect, I think that should cover it. Sounds great. Uh, Rachel, here's one for you. Um, it's about focus mode. Uh, this teacher is just wondering, what's the best way for them to use focus mode? They've heard about it, um, but they're not quite sure about how to use that in their classroom. That's great. Uh, well, as Shakiba mentioned before, focus mode is one of our partnered features. So if you have focus mode enabled, that means you're with one of our partnered schools or districts. So hi, it's nice to see you. <laughs> Thanks for joining us. Um, for focus mode, what I do find is Obviously, it does work best in an in-person classroom setting, so I know some of you are returning to the classrooms. When you turn focus mode on, it actually turns on for one hour at a time, and it will uh, lock kids into the Tower Town area. They increase their time on task, which is really great. So what we find a lot of our teachers that we work with do is they'll have the students sit down in class. They have free time to play Prodigy. Maybe they have 20 minutes. Maybe they have the period, whatever it might be. Um, so they'll they'll turn on focus mode, then have the children log in, and that will put them in focus mode automatically and have them play through. Um, in a remote environment, you can also try this with a virtual classroom as well. If you have the students logging in to play Prodigy in a virtual setting, in a remote setting, you can still do that certainly as well um, and have it turned on that way too. Yeah, that sounds great. Thanks for that explanation. No problem. I might have you stay on the line here to cover this next one. Um, here is a teacher who has students who previously played Prodigy last year. 
now they're moving into her class, um, but she knows that her students, as we all know, are going to want to try and keep their objects and costumes and pets. So um, she's just wondering if they move to a new class, will the placement test still happen for them? Of course. So the placement test happens automatically no matter what. It happens twice a year for new and existing users. So it will happen um, regardless of they're in a new class or in an old classroom. They will get it at the start of the year around this time. And then again, midway through the year around January. If a student signs up for a new account, they'll be given the placement test right away. Um, so don't worry, there's nothing you have to do to kind of get that started. They're gonna get it no matter what. And if you do want a little bit more information on having students with existing accounts join your classroom in the YouTube um, description, if you head over to that YouTube description, there is a link there that will give you a little bit more instructions on having students with existing accounts join your new classroom and how they can do that there. So. If you need any more information, check that out. Great, thanks so much. Uh, Shiba, I might have you come back on here for the next question. Um, there's a teacher here who wants to know with the rebrand, um, has the look of the lands changed or the look of the characters changed? Has anything else changed along with that? Yeah, that's a really good question, um, especially since we've already covered, we've rebranded and our whole look has changed. Um, so I, I imagine that's why you're asking. Um, yeah, we're really excited, of course, about our about the changes and uh, about the look of our new rebrand. However, we've kept the game completely the same. So nothing in game has changed for the students. The lands haven't changed. The way that the questions are presented or haven't, hasn't changed. Uh, the look of the characters or epics, everything remains exactly the same. So no worries there. Uh, but that's a really fantastic question. Question. So everything in game has stayed the same. Uh, everything outside of that has changed. Great, thanks so much. Uh, Shakiba, I might actually keep you on here for a couple more questions if you don't mind. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> have a lot of them, so I'm gonna- <laughs> No, that's great. Um, there's a teacher here who would like to know, um, they heard us mentioning virtual manipulatives that students can use in game, and they're yes. just wondering how students can actually go about accessing those. Yep, absolutely. Really great question again. So because nothing has changed in game, the virtual manipulatives have remained the same as well. So as soon as you are playing as a, as a student and a question comes up, uh, what happens is the, when the question is presented to you on the screen itself, you'll be presented with a couple things. Uh, those virtual manipulatives include a text to speech bubble that reads the question out loud to every single student and this will be on every single question. There's also a little light bulb that appears for a lot of the questions and what that allows the student to do is get a little bit more context around what's happening on that uh, on that question or what it's asking. Uh, there are also other things on the right hand side like pencils or they are in multiple colors uh, that you can use to kind of doodle on the screen so you're not having to problem solve on a piece of paper. Uh, there's also an eraser that erases all of that information as well as well as counters and base blocks and fractions and for some questions pertaining to currency there are also coins as well. So a lot of really uh, fantastic manipulatives that are there to really push the student to try try things and to problem solve on their own, but all the manipulatives will pop up automatically as soon as a question is asked of the, of the student inside the game. Yeah, that's great. I know that one of my favorites is the ruler tool. I know that students love using that and, and moving that around to measure different things in game. So you mentioned a lot of really great ones there. Um, one question here, a teacher is wondering, uh, Shakiba, what is the difference between when students are telling them I'm playing in school or I'm playing at home? Would you be able to break that down for us? Yeah, I can elaborate a little bit more on that. So there are two modes that the kids can play in and it really is all dependent on the time of day. So between the time, the hours of eight to four, um, it's automatically calculated as uh, school time or school mode and then any time after that is counted as home mode and that's really for data purposes so when the when the kids are in school for example and they're supposed to be in school hours it'll count it as such and so when you're looking at data in the teacher dashboard or the administrative dashboard uh, you'll see something that looks uh, that actually says home uh, home mode or uh, school mode or questions answered at home questions answered at school and that's really for that purpose um, so that's really the difference the major difference there but 
but uh, otherwise there are a couple other nuances like when you are in school mode there are some things that are disabled that doesn't allow you to play as much um, of the gaming aspects of the game or doesn't allow you to actually go into your house or do as much of the fun stuff <laughs> um, air quotes around that um, and then when you are in home mode there are a lot there's a lot of, a lot more a leniency and freedom that you you, you have as a student you can play a little bit more um, and you can kind of move around a little bit more freely than you would normally in, in, in school mode. I hope that answers the question. Yeah, I think it does. I know that as a teacher, I'm definitely after getting my students the most time on task as possible. So that definitely helps to clarify for a lot of us. Yeah, school um, mode definitely does that. <laughs> sure. Um, it looks like we're actually approaching the end of our session here. We only have, I think, three minutes left. So. If your question wasn't addressed here tonight, I'm so sorry about that. We really appreciate all of your questions and your engagement tonight during tonight's webinar. So if it wasn't addressed there, um, there's going to be a link to a document in the chat there uh, where you can actually write down some of your questions that didn't get answered. I know there were a couple of them and uh, I'm sorry about that, of course, um, but uh, we don't wanna keep you all away from the rest of your evening. So. Um, we just like to thank you for doing that. So um, just to finish up, uh, I'd like to thank you again so much for coming to our session today. Again, next week, we're hosting a session about school data. So be sure to let your math coaches, your administrators know that this is all coming up next Thursday. And if you want to review anything that was discussed in this session, please be sure to head to our Prodigy YouTube to find any past webinars that you might be interested in. Um, and then finally, um, don't forget to check out um, all of the different things that we have at our fingertips here. We have the Prodigy blog, uh, Champions Club, or our Facebook page. Uh, those are all great resources for teachers to, to access as we go forward into this new school year. So thanks again, everyone. And thanks from the whole team here at Prodigy. We really appreciate uh, you all attending tonight. Thanks again.